up fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at the Aquaman vs. Black Manta battle set from the Spin Master line for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. So I think it's funny that it's called the battle set. It makes no mention of the submarine, which I feel like is the main draw of the set. It has 10 plus sound effects. It lights up, has a try me function, and it was $7. That's right, I found this at Walmart for $7.00. Um, I feel like it took a while to find it. I had seen people online finding these at Walmart. The figures, the individual figures were like a dollar a piece. These were seven bucks. I don't know if Walmart was carrying anything else from this line, but I looked around. I kept searching all my Walmarts. My Walmarts never got like the big cardboard displays for the middle of the aisles with all this stuff. That's where I kept seeing pictures. Everyone was finding it. It got clearance like almost immediately. Um, I guess the movie didn't do well. I saw it. I thought it was all right. Um, nothing groundbreaking, had some laughs, had some action, you know, I think it's worth a watch at least once, this is something you need to buy and, and watch forever, maybe not, but it was worth watching one time, there you go, there's my Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom review. In any case, back to this, uh, we have the open style of packaging here, so you can reach right in and touch the, uh, toys, now it does have the try me function, so I'll go ahead... It's honestly pretty loud. I have to admit, the speaker's right here on the top. You got the button. Now, in the movie, if you had seen the movie, this ship was massive. I mean, the bridge alone had so much empty space and it could hold like 30 people. This obviously can fit one figure inside. There was no way they could make it to scale with the movie to the figures. I get that. Um, but it does feel a little small. It would have been nice if it was maybe a little bit bigger. But then again, they couldn't sell this one at seven, so you know a larger one probably would have sold even worse. Now this says was twenty nine ninety seven. I'm pretty sure when it first came out, it was forty. I could be wrong, and it might still be that much at Target. I honestly don't know. Um, but yeah, I, seven dollars. I I couldn't say no. Now it comes with a Black Manta and an Aquaman. I believe these are the exact same figures that were released singly, as well as that four pack that was a Target exclusive with the like. Black Manta henchman in the uh, old-timey diver suit, we'll say. <laughs> I did a review of that um, a while back, so I'll put that at the end of the video if you want to check that out. Uh, and then this is just your standard Aquaman, again, was released in that set. Uh, the single packs, and I think there was like another Amazon set that he might have been in as well. So, yeah, not too exciting. Definitely not buying this for the figures. I feel like with the Spin Master stuff, it was the same with the Flash. By the time you buy... All the vehicle sets or things you want, you have like five of every character because they just keep putting the same figures in every set. I understand that, you know, you want whoever's buying this to be able to get an Aquaman right away. But then you end up with five or six Aquaman by the time this is done. It is what it is. Now it looks like this comes with three LR44 watch batteries, which are included, I would assume. Uh, let's see what this says. It does say included, so there you go. Got the logo up there with Jason Momoa, looking good. Not really much going on in the bottom here. Uh, another close-up of Jason Momoa over on this side. And then again, just the logo over there. And then spinning it around to the back, just kind of a dynamic shot of the ship with the two of them floating alongside it. I guess the propellers spin, you can fit the one character inside. And it lights up. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the packaging. I'm gonna go ahead Get this stuff out of here and we'll take a closer look. Okay, so here's everything you get in the box. Uh, one thing I did want to kind of show you first though, here's the instruction manual. So instructions, we have the ship, we have the two figures and their respective weapons. But look how thick this is. If I open this up, I mean, this is like a CVS receipt. This is ridiculous. So if you take a look at this, it shows you assembly because this piece clips onto the bottom. Uh, and before you freak out, I had a minute where I was like, I don't have this piece. It's actually inside the ship. So it's in the like area where you would put a figure wrapped in some tissue paper. So, I mean, I wasn't like super worried about it, but I'm, I'm looking through the box and I'm like, I don't have this. And I'm like, it must be inside. And sure enough, it was. So... Then it shows you you can put the uh, figures inside as long as you 
<laughs> break their legs and have them point in different directions like this. It's a really weird way to have to put the figures in, but we'll check that out. Uh, and then it says push button for lights and sounds. And then tinily over here, it just tells you about the batteries. And then all of this is just verbiage and I guess warnings in different languages. It's just so much paper. Look at this. This is crazy. So I don't know. I thought it was funny. I wanted to show it off quick, but here we have the sub. We have the two figures. Now, if you have any of the other releases, I believe these are exactly the same. I think you won't be getting anything new here. These are the same figures that were released singly as well in the various other figure packs. Black Manta still doesn't love to stand up, but uh, they're good figures, though. Honestly, I think it's a decent likeness of Jason Momoa. I think the texturing and the paint detail here, all the molded in detail, I think is pretty good. I mean, when you think about the fact that these are $8 figures, apparently sometimes $1 at Walmart. I mean, $1 at Walmart is an absolute steal. I mean, these things are good. They're solid little four inch figures, honestly. So we have the Trident here. And this uh, is just done out of this kind of gold mustardy colored plastic. Just solid one one piece. But it has some nice molded in detail. Uh, for the Aquaman figure, head can rotate side to side. Maybe it can tilt up and down slightly. I really can't tell. It's mostly side to side. But you have a hinge here for the shoulder. Rotation. You have a hinge and a swivel at the elbow. Uh, nothing at the wrist. It almost for a second looked like there was a cut there. But I think it's just the way it's molded. Nothing at the waist. I do wish these had waist swivels. I feel like they used to, but they don't anymore. Maybe I made that up. Maybe I dreamed that. But some nice detailing on all of this armor here. The gold. And again, the texturing. I mean, just looking at the kind of patterning here for these gray pants... It's kind of neat. I think they did a nice job with that, honestly. Uh, you have a thigh swivel. Move that there. Uh, ball joint in the hip. Kick pretty decently out to the side. Pretty far forward. So nice motion there. He's got kind of a, a butt flap. Really, he's got he's got quite a butt. But anyway, that, that prevents that from really going backwards at all. And then in the knee, you have a hinge. It's a little tight right out of the box, but there you go. You have a hinge, you have a rotation. Apparently some of the paint came off, so that's interesting. That might be flashing, though. It might be flashing from the plastic. And then this is one solid piece. So it has the swivel here at the knee, but, like, the boots don't swivel. There's no ankle tilt. But still, for a little 4-inch figure, for normally $8... I'm pretty happy with these. I think they look good. I think the paint applications are definitely there. I think the details there, the molded in detail, definitely. So it's a cool little figure. If you don't have one already, you know, definitely worth adding to the collection. Now, if we move on to Black Manta, which you can kind of see how like they don't want to stand because they're naturally pitched forward. But maybe if I bend this at the knee slightly there we go maybe something like that can shift the weight there you go that works anyway black manta now he has a trident as well if you've seen the movie quite the plot point this magical fancy trident um this is definitely like a softer more rubbery plastic though and i don't really know why i don't know why aquaman's trident is pretty solid plastic i mean it's not you know, super rigid. It has a little bit of give to it, but this definitely feels more rubbery. And the other thing I would have liked, if you've seen the movie, minor spoilers if you haven't, the trident is in two pieces and then he's like constantly hooking it together. So it would have been neat if they could have just done, like it almost even kind of looks like right here, you know, like just cut that and then have like a peg on one side and a peg hole on the other. So that you could be, you know, pegging this together just like he does in the film. Or sometimes he'll even kind of use it as two separate dual-wielded weapons, which is kind of cool. So I definitely don't think he could have done that with this softer plastic. But I wonder if you could even mod it yourself. I mean, I have a couple of these now. I probably could just cut one in half and just have the solid one and have the two-piece one. Switch them out. 
But yeah, so that's that's the only thing. I don't really understand why one is a softer, gummier plastic than the other one is, and I wish that you could bisect this. Anyway, back to Black Manta. Again, he's fine. I believe it's exactly the same. I don't think there's any difference here between the other releases. His giant dome can swivel side to side. And you have some give in those, like, connection wires, so not an issue there. Nice red paint there for the eyes. That looks good. Some gunmetal gray paint down here for the collar. Otherwise, he's just all done in black plastic, except for this little bit here on the forearm, which is also kind of painted this metallic uh, gunmetal gray color. Almost blends in, honestly. Uh, but then you have the same articulation, so hinge and rotation in the shoulder. Hinge and rotation in the elbow, nothing in the wrist, nothing in the waist. Got a ball joint here. Unfortunately, he's got these, like, large, almost saddlebag things going on here on the side of his leg. And they do get in the way of his leg articulation, so he can only rock about a 45 degree angle. Which I'm assuming is going to make it awkward for him to sit in this sub. So we'll see how that goes. He's got a thigh swivel. We've got a hinge and rotation there in the knee. And then again, uh, nothing. Even though it kind of looks like he's got boots and it almost looks like they'd swivel there, they do not. Nothing in the ankle. But again, solid little 4-inch figure. I like him quite a bit. I'm going to move all these guys off to the side here so we can check out this sub. Now, I don't know why, but when I first look at this sub, it makes me think of the Penguin from Batman. I think he had a similar sub, but it was obviously shaped like a penguin. Uh, but I just get that same kind of vibes from this. So, again, you have this little piece here on the front, and it's got kind of a hook on the front that you kind of feed in, and then just bring this part up. It'll snap in, and then there you go. And here is Randall Park's famous laser, or pulse gun, or vibration gun, whatever we want to call this thing. Featured prominently in the movie. Done in this brown plastic. You have some translucent orange here for the eyes of the hammerhead shark. And then this is painted orange. So this is not translucent. That's just orange paint. Uh, here is the battery compartment. If you would ever have to change out the batteries, you just unscrew these two screws. Pop the panel off. Change out the batteries. Then you have this translucent orange down here. I think in the movie this was kind of like an area that could open up and smaller ships could kind of load in and out from underneath. Obviously nothing like that's going to be possible here. Uh, you have this little section that almost looks like it's supposed to be a hatch, like when they surface. This would be like where they enter and exit, but again, not possible here. Here is the button for the sound effects. Here is the speaker. It does have these little turbines here that can spin, but they're so small that they're honestly negligible. And they try to make it like it's a big selling point on the box, but they're so tiny, they just kind of blend in, and you, I forgot they were even here. But, yeah, they do spin. I'll give them that. Um, yeah, so before we fit a figure inside, I guess we'll go through the sounds here. So it says that there are 10 sounds. It might have even said 10 plus, but I'm just going to uh, hit the button here through a couple times. So it does light up on the sides here. See if I can kind of shield this so you can see it light up. So that's kind of cool. I think it's a nice job. It lights up pretty well. So kind of just some generic I guess submarine sounds like hydraulics and warning sounds and I think there's uh, some firing missile torpedo sounds. So there you go, firing four torpedoes.
Now, I don't know if it's on a cycle or if it just randomly picks one or not. So that almost sounds like it's firing a torpedo and then there's like a little trail of water afterwards. I feel like we're hearing the same ones over and over again. That's got kind of like some propeller sounds there at the end. There was one I got earlier where it sounded like it was moving through the water and I thought it was really cool and I can't get it to do that one again. Here it is. It's just kind of like a sonar sound as it you know, moves through the water and it's got kind of like a trickling water sound. That's kind of neat. I mean, the sounds are not the most amazing, but some of them are kind of cool. You have some torpedo sounds, you have some warning sounds, you have the sonar sound, you have some, you know, torpedoes firing with like water effects at the end or like that one I just had where it's moving through the water and you can kind of hear the water sounds. I think that's kind of neat. Um, let's go ahead, let's open this up. So you kind of want to grab on. They do put kind of like a nice little divot here that you can grab onto to open this up. And you can see there is the little area for the character to fit in. So let's see if we can actually get Black Manta to fit in here. So unfortunately, because his legs kind of bend strangely, I don't know how well this is going to work. Okay, so it looks like we have to flatten his feet out to the side which I'm sure is super comfortable uh, all right close enough maybe not the best not the worst um, I'm kind of surprised they didn't do this as like translucent so you could see the figure inside because honestly you could just as much pretend he's in there or not in there and there's really no way to know but yeah, one figure fits inside. So there's that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a little lackluster. I mean, honestly, if I was paying full price $40 for this and the two figures, I wouldn't necessarily feel like I was being ripped off. But I don't know that the value's there. Um, I mean, all day, I'll say these figures are worth $8 to $10 a piece. I think that's fair. The articulation's there. They have an accessory each, a really nice big accessory each. Uh, you have a little bit of paint, some more than others. Like Black Manta, I think, you know, he's a little bit more simplistic design, so he doesn't need as much. But I feel like Aquaman, they went out of their way, you know, with the titular character, titular hero here. Um, amazing detail in the texture of, like, his armor. You know, the paint applications are there. The green for the gloves and the boots, I think his trident looks great. The face sculpt for a small four-inch figure, I think is perfectly good. Has a decent resemblance to Jason Momoa. Alright, they're not twins, but you get it. I mean, for a four-inch figure, I think it's more than fair. So, I think these figures are worth $8 a piece all day. I I'll defend that. Um, so, that if you think about the original retail price... If that's 16 I'll even round them up to 20 That means you're $20 just for the ship. Um, I have to believe that the reason that price is so much is just because of the electronics, which I will say it delivers on the electronics. I mean, the eyes light up. They light up pretty well. The sound effects are good. The speaker is loud. I had no problem hearing that. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if it's on a cycle with the sounds or if it picks them at random. But I feel like we got there. If we didn't hear all 10, we got pretty close. So, you know, would I necessarily pay $20 for this? 
that's hard to say. I mean, I don't think it's a ripoff at $20, but it's really just going to be a your mileage will vary kind of situation. Now, for $7 for the set, all day, every day. I think this is a great value. Now, again, if you already have these two figures, then that's not really an incentive to pick this set up because you might have got them singly when they were on sale or in one of the four packs or, or something like that. So, you know, but they're still great figures. I mean, and sometimes it's not bad to have a backup if something happens or if you want to customize something or something like that. But I still think the value's there. I still think these are worth $8 a piece. Uh, getting the whole set for $7, I think, is a steal. You know, I definitely, even if I was just paying $7 for just this ship, I think that would be perfectly acceptable. The electronics are good. It comes with the batteries. Let's be honest, the three batteries on their own is probably 5 to $10 if you're just buying batteries. Um, but yeah, I really think this is a decent little ship. Of course, it would have been cooler if it was bigger. But again, didn't sell that well at this size. Probably going to be a harder sell at the larger size, but maybe if they had made kind of a play set out of it, if it was maybe a sub that then opened up into a play set. We've seen Spin Master do things like this before where they have, you know, Batmobiles that open up into play sets or a large Batman that opens up into a Batcave, something like that. I think maybe that could have been something that would have worked. Um... Now, again, you know, the movie didn't do super well, so maybe they didn't want to invest too much money into it. I can understand that as well. So, I, I mean, if, if it was an ideal world and the movie did well and the merchandise was going all out, I think you could have done maybe a $50, $60 larger ship that opened up into a small playset or at least had some more play features or something. You know, um, maybe a small... See, I don't know, it gets into the weird thing because the scale is so vastly different. So in the movie, you had those little octopus mech. They were really neat. They went in and out of here. But again, like, it wouldn't make sense because the scale's so off. So I don't know. I, it it kind of put them in a, in a no-win scenario, and I feel like they did the best they could. But again, for a one-man little vehicle for 7 bucks with lights and sounds, I think that's a deal. Would I have necessarily paid $40 for the set? Personally, probably not. But I don't think that was a ripoff at that price. I just, the value is not worth it to me. Now, if these were two, you know, exclusive figures to this set and they were painted differently or they were characters that weren't available anywhere else for $40, I would have much more greatly considered paying the full price because, you know, when you, when you immediately look at the set and you already have half of it, that brings your your need down. <laughs> so I think even if they wanted to do Aquaman, just paint him a little differently or do something, maybe do a more comic. I mean, honestly, it's already pretty comic accurate, but do something a little different, whatever you want it to be, just to make it exclusive to this set. I think that would have driven up the value. But when it's the exact same Aquaman you can already get, it's kind of a weird situation because I understand... Whoever picks up this set, they want them to be able to immediately have everything they need. Aquaman, Black Manta, the sub. But at the same time, if everything you release has Aquaman because you want him to be readily available, there's no reason to need to buy every set. I feel like put Aquaman with this, maybe don't release him in the single figure line, or maybe put him in the single figure line and make him super available and then do exclusive things for the vehicle sets, or at least do variants for the vehicle sets. I don't know. In any case, I think this is a good toy. I think it's fun. For $7, it's a steal. If you can find it on sale or on clearance at your local Walmart for 7 bucks all day, every day, I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. Um, would I pay full price? Probably not just because I already have the two figures. Now, if you have nothing from the Spin Master Aquaman line, and you can find this for maybe a little bit cheaper than retail, even at full retail, I don't think it's bad. Because like I said, I think all the figures are great. The sub is fine. It's not the best, but you know, maybe if it had some kind of... And I know this sounds stupid because I'm not usually a fan of this, but maybe some kind of spring-loaded missile launcher or something... Or maybe this piece here. I mean, not that it needs that. The lights and sounds are cool. And I have to believe that's the reason that the price is high on this. Because of the lights and sounds. And it does include the batteries, which is a nice plus. I'm talking in circles. You guys get it. 
I, for $7, it's a steal. Full retail, it's a maybe. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching.